Hello and welcome to African Voices. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Kulego Sibanda here with my colleague uh, Bela Jela. Uh, we're looking at uh, the International uh, Women's Month uh, and to discuss this topic we have uh, Chiwe Tandewe Chihane who is uh, an African woman and uh, champions the issues of men working as a member of the African Di Diaspora Women's Network. She also works for the DEWA project where she is the lead on policy uh, and research. Uh, uh, welcome to our program. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for coming. Uh, look, uh, just to start this up, uh, Zambia is, uh, is your country. It is my country. Uh, and, and, and I've got some news for you. It's the only country in Africa since the end of colonization to have been led by a white person. Uh, uh, you have had a white president beat for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shall we say that? Uh, <laughs> sh shall we therefore say that Zambia is beyond racism? What do you um, think? I wouldn't exactly say Zambia is beyond racism, but what I would try and put back to you is is racist is where the racism is coming from. So having a white president, are you saying? Um, Zambia is not racist because we adopted a white president, or are you saying the whites of Zambian heritage are not racist? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it's a completely valid question that you're throwing back, but I think that we are, uh, uh, you know, when America had a, f a, a black president, if mm -hmm. you could say that, there was an indication that some people were saying we are post, uh, we are in the post-racism era. So I'm just trying to throw this into the African context. And how quick it was uh, for Zambia to have managed that, it's, it's, it's very improbable in many places in such a short space of time, Zambia getting independent uh, less than 50 years ago. And suddenly you have, uh, uh, even, even if it was for a short period of time, you have a white president. I think in many ways it is, it is, it is, it is an achievement in terms of describing the Zambian person and how he views, uh, how he or she views, uh, or they view themselves, in the context of uh, of racism. And a lot of people certainly, I think, don't recognise uh, that fact. What do you think, Mr. Bela? Well, um, what you've just said there, I totally agree with both of you. Uh, in terms of Zambia, they've done what any other African country has not done yet since colonisation, like you said. But in terms of what Chiwe has said as well, if you look at it in another context. Both of you are right, but it's definitely a bigger achievement having a white president since colonization, being the first African country. But one thing I want you to know as well, um, Zambia is not only proud of that history, they have created another history as well, which uh, in the continent, they are like the first country as well to have um, started a women's museum, you know, which I believe is a very, very important thing to talk about. It's an very, very ach big achievement because um, if you look at that museum where they are having the topic that we're looking at now, International Women's Month, that museum, the creator of that museum is wanting for Zambians to be able to come and document or Zambian women to be able to document their own history, to document what they are capable of doing. That's another bigger achievement. So Chiwe, in terms of the International Women's Month, and in terms of that uh, museum that I've just spoken about, what does International Women's Month mean to you? And looking at that achievement that um, the, the Women's Living History Museum in Zambia, how is that collaborated in regarding to, 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 to the, what can, the word I'm looking for, to the International Women's Month? Okay. And thanks a lot for recognizing that. You've just pointed out something that I actually did not know. I didn't realize it was the only um, women's history museum across the African continent, but that's something to be proud of. I think Zambia is a country of a lot of firsts, like you said about the first white president. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the, Afri uh, the Zambian Women's History Museum was established in November 2017. Mm -hmm. um, when it how it relates to Women's Month and why that becomes an important thing is because it's the African Women's, uh, Zambian Women's Museum that worked in partnership with the Swedish government through the Swedish embassy on an initiative called the Wikigap. Mm. 
So the Wikigap is where the Swedish government in its uh, gender and foreign policy uh, re research and, and, and um, endeavors have recognized that there's a huge gap in, 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 in terms of content that's put online, um, especially on Wikipedia, that it talks about women. And then specifically in an African context, there are very few women um, that are documented on Wikipedia. Mm. Um, statistics show that it's of every five uh, profiles that you come across on Wikipedia, only one will be of a woman. Mm. And also 90% of content creators on Wikipedia are actually men. So this initiative was to encourage more women to get involved and also to um, uh, profile African women, specifically Zambian women in this context. Mm. And then they launched that on, um, on International Women's Day, having had a full month of wiki wikiphones, you would call them, mm -hmm. where you have a lot of people coming in, so women were invited and lots of profiles were submitted, and here we are today. So talking of what you've just uh, mentioned here, um, how vital has this been since then, since November 2007 when it was launched, um, compared to like prior to that, uh, if you look at the African women in general, because uh, what you've just mentioned here is a very interesting one, um, having said in terms of one in four of the documents that are put on Wikipedia are all about men rather than women. And uh, the African women as well do contribute quite a lot, especially in terms of multitasking. You and I will know African women are quite capable of doing all they are doing all in one go. So how vital has that, uh, or has this museum been to the Zambian community or to Zambian women? Okay. So I'll just correct that. It's 2017. If I said seven, I misspoke. Mm. It's 2017, November. So mm. literally the last five, four, five months, right. it, it's been on. Um, a lot of young people, especially young women, are in awe of, of the profiles they're seeing. It's, it's, it's something that hasn't happened before. They haven't had a go-to where you could see a woman who would, that, that's a reflection of you as a girl child, to say, this woman achieved this, and she came from where I've come from. And, and there's, there's quite a lot of traction as far as inspiration is concerned. Of course, there's lots more work to be done in terms of getting more people there. It's in Lusaka, so, which is the capital of Zambia. Yeah. Um, maybe the question to ask is, how do you get other kids from the rural areas to come around to seeing something as inspirational as that? Do you have a, do you have a Wikipedia profile? Have you created one? I have not created a. Uh, have I created a Wikipedia profile? I have created a Wikipedia profile, but it hasn't been my Wikipedia profile. It's been a Wikipedia profile of another woman. I think Wikipedia has got regulations about you creating your own content about okay. yourself. Okay, so let's hope somebody will pick it up and uh, and work on it. But look, uh, we talked about Zambia being a country of first. There's one first I haven't seen. It would be interesting to to see how you would respond to that. Zambia has had uh, a, a white president. Uh, we had one before independence, of course. Um, but uh, we haven't seen a female president. Uh, you know, uh, women have been living in Zambia from the beginning of time. Uh, why this disparity? Why are we assuming to be, or why could we possibly today argue that we are in Zambia post-racism, uh, uh, even, uh, even if you talked about the racism of the colonial era itself, but even after yeah. racism, we've, we've gone to a place where you could argue theoretically. I'm not saying it's Absolutely. real. That you have, you, you, you have, you've run into an era of post-racialism. Why haven't we run into an era of post-manism? Why haven't you run into an era of equality? Yeah, I think that's a very fair point you make, uh, considering that Zambia has actually had more presidents than quite a lot of uh, countries around the region. Mm -hmm. So we, we do we do tend to transition quite quickly into um, into into presidents. At least we, we we do get the minimum standards of what a democracy should look like. I suppose. Are you sure about that? <laughs> uh, it's is, is arguable. It not, is, is it not that they're dying too quickly in office? I don't well, know. They, they, we have had quite a few deaths, but yeah. the transition periods. I think have been less chaotic than you would you would expect them to be. Mm -hmm. um, what what I can point out is 
we currently have a woman vice president, and we recently changed the, vote, the, the voting system to be, you ha we have a running mate system, and for the first time mm. ever, we had people running on a ticket as a president and a vice president, and a woman was, um, was, was running with the president. Unfortunately, yes, it is a first, and she only gets to be president when the president is, is away. Um, but um, it, it, it's quite sad, I think, that we haven't yet had a, wom a, a woman president because we do have quite a lot of women achievers in Zambia. Mm -hmm. um, the political environment sometimes is not as inviting, I think, to women's uh, political aspirations. Um, and that's one of the big things that needs to be looked into. We need to create a, a political environment that's accommodating to women and, 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 and their disposition as well to, to engage fairly. I think you raised a very yeah, important point there because um, we're regarding to the vice presidency. You know, I mean, many African countries, if you look at it, most of the vice presidents are all men or the presidents or the top jobs are all men. But uh, in Zambia, they're having a vice president who is a woman, apart from, let's say, like Liberia, you know, recently, I think another African country, which I cannot remember, Malawi, Malawi probably, Malawi, yeah. the rest of Africa, you know, mm -hmm. is all men, which I believe we are lacking behind. But mm -hmm. having the post of the vice presidency as well, if the president is away, she's in charge, that's another achievement. And Zambia as well, you are proud of having all these top, top um, women jobs in that country. Because mm -hmm. if you look at uh, this lady here as well, what's her name again? Um, the lady who created the, the living... History Museum, uh, something younger, what's her name? Samba, Sam Samba Sam Yonga. Samba yeah. Yonga, yeah. you know, who is a journalist, yeah. you know. She's very, very academic as well, and, you know, and she's achieved, you know, I would say in many places across Europe, mm -hmm. you know. So in terms of looking at all those achievements, what do you think African women needs to do, or Zambian women, if I can put it in particular, you being from Zambia, what are the kind of challenges that they are facing or what, where do you think they need to improve in order to get the equality that they, that they may be looking for? Okay, well, thanks a lot for that, and thanks for the recognition of Zambian women that, that are achievers there. Um, I'll also just point out that um, there was a recent study about, a recent, yeah, it was a study. I can't remember who did the study, but mm. there was, uh, the, the findings were that, Zambia, in terms of its strength, you have a lot of women leading corporate organizations. That's, that's what Zambia is, is good for at the moment, at mm. least a lot of corporate organizations are led by women. So that's, that, that's pretty good. Um, in terms of the snowball effect of that, how far wide it reaches, and wh um, what, other co um, what other countries can do about it. I mean, Zambia mm. is nowhere near where we need to be to start with, mm. um, just as the rest of sub-Saharan Africa. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit scared skeptical about speaking about the MENA countries up north mm. there. Um, I'm, I'm not very, I'm not well versed. Mm. Um, and also just to point out, Mauritius has got a woman president, by the way, who's, okay. who's, who's kind sort of being ousted at the moment on corruption allegations, which is quite sad, but she, 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 she is um, mm. a, a president. But um, in terms of women leadership across the continent, mm. we need to look at what has inhibited us maybe um, historically from, from achieving that. Yeah. We are 50% of the population, or is it 50 plus now, 50 of plus, the population of, of sub-Saharan Africa. So you cannot talk about progression whilst you're leaving one part of the whole behind. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what has been the problem. So there's so many things at, um, at, at, at the very foundation of it, things like what access do girl children have to education? What access do girl children have to uh, to similar chances of, of, of gender parity at education? Mm. Yes, the Millennium Development Goals sort of went there. Um, there was gender parity at primary school level, um, but then beyond that, what's the level of attainment? Is it early marriages that are inhibiting us? What are your priorities? What's the quality of education as well that the majority of the girls are getting? And who are their role models? Who inspires them? I think those are some of the challenges that we that are very unique and specific to women. I think you, 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 you certainly could uh, 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 see this uh, as not just a question of the opportunities that uh, girls take or the lack of opportunity that uh, uh, women take in, in society. 
Uh, I think part of it is, uh, I don't know if you share that thought, but some, some of uh, the, the problem we have. And I think that we need to be, even as we make this discussion, to be a lot mm. more careful about mm. our characterization. I think that the problem of disparity between males and females is an international problem. I mean, in the, in, in, in the rest of the world, you could count on one hand the number of times a, f a female uh, president has been uh, uh, has been has been uh, elected. I mean, Britain is quite lucky and unique yeah. in the sense that they've had two prime ministers who are female mm -hmm. over so many years, over over, over centuries. Uh, so it is not necessarily an African problem, mm -hmm. but I think you could argue that Africa has its own unique set of challenges when it comes to um, uh, 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 having women take part in social and public uh, public public life. Um, uh, so one of those uh, problem, uh, sources of that problem, I think, are in many ways uh, in Africa and perhaps the rest of the world structural in the sense that, um, you know, when you grew up as a boy, you grew up knowing uh, that you could become a president one day mm -hmm. and that uh, the sky is the limit. When you grow up as a girl, you are natured into thinking that you have to be, uh, you grow up to become a good mother, uh, and that when you become a good mother, a male is going to be, to be in charge, not just in private spaces, but also in the public. Uh, I have a mother who, uh, as an example, I have a mother who is uh, the first person in my life, because I have, I have not seen any other uh, person on earth who would give more than they have themselves, any other person on earth who's as selfless as she has been. Um, but I had an argument with her recently, uh, and I've had this argument with her many times, about her, uh, I, 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 I meet up with her and we're making decisions, and my mother is really devoted to this idea that I should make the decision. I'm her child, and she's raised me so well that I think that uh, I'm an example, I'm evidence of how good and great she is, of how her decisions work. But yet she has no faith in her own supremacy, the supremacy of her ideas, of her mind. And so I have to have this argument with her where I say, Mom, but look, uh, 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 I'm living in your world, not, not you living in my world. Um, and, and you can imagine that my mother's raising my sisters to live in a man's world and not uh, in a world that's shared by um, uh, men and women. So I think that if we are going to uh, address these disparities, I don't know if you agree that we shouldn't just look at the behavior of men or the attitudes that men have. We must also look at the attitudes that women themselves have over how they're raising a girl child and how that fits into what a girl decides to do or not to do in life. That's absolutely true. Um, the legacy of patriarchy. Um, yeah. We are predominantly a patriarchal society when it comes to sub-Saharan African. Um, I think there are very few matrilineal societies out there. Um, and the, 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 what, what patriarchy has done is sort of subjugated the role and the voice of the woman where you, you, you your culture... Everything. I think everything is, is, is must as your culture says this. Your culture says that there's a man here, so you've got to, um, you've got to, to, to pay homage to the man before you can actually pay homage to the woman. And unfortunately, um, being raised by, by Zambians myself, by Zambian parents, both both were Zambian, so I, I grew up around that as well, where I, I had to take myself out of a situation where I felt, look. I can think as well as my brother can. I can mm. do things as well as my brother can. Why does it have to be different? Um, it's difficult, I think, for a lot of women, especially from, from my mom's generation, my grandmother's generation, even worse, because you, you had specified roles and your duty around the family and the home was very much uh, st stereotyped and, and, and predisposed to being fulf a fulfilling person or to meet the needs of the man or the, 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 the man in your home or the men. Um, but we have that chance now, you know, the way you would raise your boy child 
is, is the way you should be raising your girl child. There shouldn't be that disparity anymore. We, but then it's, it's people stepping out of that zone to understand why it's important. Um, and that's the task that lies before us. And again, it comes back to how do we document women's history? Why are we not doc documenting it? If we document it, we've got people to look up to. Um, you've got people to look up to. It's not just in the digital age, but even within settings where people do not have access to, to information that's electronic, you can pass on that as part of education. And, and I think generation by generation, the mindset will change, hopefully. Of course, that what you've just said is true. Uh, generation to generation, things will be changing and things will be better. But in your opinion, do you think uh, society or cultural heritage is stopping women getting up to the speed where they should be? Um, is it stopping us now? It shouldn't be, I hope not. I think mm. we, are, we are sort of getting past that now. We've come to a place of understanding where I think whether you're male or female, you know that you, you raise a woman, you, you raise a community, you know, like the si 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 um, science has shown that. So we are full participants, we're equal participants. I would hope that uh, culture should not be a limiting factor. What does what, what is culture? Culture is not static. Okay. Culture is but, not static. But, but, but uh, look, um, uh, uh, I, I, I think we need to run away from, or in fact protect ourselves in these discussions from some of the everyday stereotypical engagement on the question of female and male equality in Africa that you hear every day. I yeah. mean, uh, I had, um, and I, my, my daughter came back from school the other day saying, I was in school and my teacher was teaching and she gave an example of Zimbabwe and said that uh, uh, in Zimbabwe, girl children are not allowed to go to school at all. It's only boys. And that is categorically untrue. Girl children are going, as it is, it, every child has to go to school um, uh, 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 in Zimbabwe. And uh, I don't think that when... Uh, and if you look at the literacy rates, they're, they're, they're uh, almost at par on both genders, and that's because everybody goes to school. But there's also this tendency to say that uh, uh, there is a deliberate attempt, uh, the, the, the deliberate policies in uh, government, uh, governments in Africa to um, uh, disempower women. Uh, but we will get, uh, uh, I think, get back to that uh, uh, in a moment uh, for now. Uh, uh, we're going to go for a break and uh, continue after the break.